In this lab, I've got three Cisco routers running within GNS3 connected to a switch, which in turn has NPM connected to it. Here's my NPM server, and as an example, I can ping 101101, which is router one. On router one, as an example, I can type debug IP ICMP, and back on NPM, when I ping that IP address, I'm getting echo replies sent on the router. So the router is receiving the ICMP messages from the NPM server. So I'll log in. Under nodes, Cisco, I can see that I have three routers currently up. So as an example, router one with IP address 101101 is shown as up. And I can see some information about that device. Now in Genius 3, I'm gonna start capturing on the link from NPM to the switch. I'll capture traffic on the switch interface. What I'd like to point out is notice ICMP messages from NPM. This server has an IP address of 10.1.100.100. That's what we're seeing as the source in the Wireshark capture, so echo, ping request, and then here's a response from the router. So as an example, I could filter for ICMP messages. And what we can see here as an example is ICMP message from NPM to router two and router two replying. We can also do a search for SNMP. So in this example, we've got an SNMP message from NPM to router three. Opening that up, we can see it's a data request message. It's trying to get this OID information. Here's a response back from the router. More response information sent back. Notice OID information. So in the background, NPM is requesting information from the routers. In this example, it's querying router two and router two is responding. Here it's querying router three and so forth and so on. That information is then displayed in a nice graphical format on the NPM server. As an example, if I click on router one, I can see information about this device. I can see that it's up, see its IP address, see other information, including the sys object ID, last boot. I could even click on the Telnet link and launch a Telnet application to Telnet directly to the device. That would require a Telnet client enabled on my PC. Scrolling down, I can see as an example that the polling method used for this device is SNMP and the polling interval is 120 seconds. I can see as an example the interfaces and the state of those interfaces. We can see other information about the device, including that it was rebooted. Let's have a look at router two. See, here's router two. We can see information about the node, once again, that it's up. We can see that it's being polled with SNMP. We can see the interfaces once again, so let's have a look at serial zero slash zero. In this case, we can see the utilization isn't very high on this interface because no traffic is being sent. And we can see that the interface is up. So here's router two, interface serial zero slash zero. That's the interface that we're looking at in NPM. I'll shut this interface down. Interface has gone down. I'll click poll now. And as you can see, the interface has been shut down. That interface has gone down. In Wireshark, we can see that a message was sent from NPM to the router, and the router then responded with information about the OIDs on the device. So let's do that again. What I'll do is restart the capture. We're gonna search for SNMP, and I'm gonna specify an IP address, 10.1.100.2. So we can see requests from the management station and then responses back from the router. What I'll do now is no shut the interface, so bring it up. So I'm bringing up serial zero slash zero back in the management interface. I'll click poll now, and notice there are null values. 
for different OIDs. And now responses are coming back from the router. Poll again, interfaces up, so it was down previously. So the MPM device is able to retrieve status information of network interfaces by using SNMP. We can see, for instance, the speed of the interface, utilization, and other options on the interface of the router, all running within GNS3. Now, something to point out, in the ICMP message, NPM is inserting data. So the NPM server, 10.1.100.100, is sending an echo request, but is including data in the message. NPM does this by default. And one of the reasons for doing this is that some devices between your NMS and the device that you're pinging may block ICMP packets with certain criteria in the data fields. Some firewalls, as an example, may block packets with a zero size data field. And some firewalls will block packets with large payloads. Some devices even block ICMP packets that are even or odd in size. In this capture, we can see that the response packet was sent from router two to the NMS. So it's an ICMP echo reply message. And the NMS will calculate the difference between the time that the request was sent and the reply received. And it uses that to calculate the round trip response time or latency of the network. Now here's an SNMP message once again from the network management station. In other words, NPM to router two, 10.1.102. You can see this is an SNMP message and SNMP uses UDP or user datagram protocol, which is a connectionless protocol unlike TCP. UDP doesn't provide reliability in the same way that TCP does. You'll also notice that the port is port 161. So the network management station is communicating with the router on destination port 161, and the router is replying back from port 161 to the ephemeral or random port number that was chosen by the NMS for this connection. It's important to remember that UDP port 161 is the destination port that the NMS initiates sessions to. In other words, the NMS, or NPM in this case, is gonna be initiating sessions to routers on port 161. You need to ensure that your firewalls or access lists or ACLs permit or allow UDP port 161 from the NMS to the devices that are being monitored and the reverse traffic also needs to be permitted. You may even want to configure devices to use a non-default port for SNMP. So rather than using the default port of 161, you may choose to use a, another port number like 10,161. You would configure that on the device and you would also need to configure that on NPM so it knows which port number to use to connect to that device for monitoring. In both the SNMP GET or SNMP REQUEST, as well as the RESPONSE, you'll see the OID values and MIB information that NPM is getting from the device. So in the REQUEST, we can see that the values are null, and in the REPLY, we can see the actual values for those OIDs. Okay, that concludes this vlog entry. Please let me know if there are any other topics that you'd like discussed as part of the CCNA vlog. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. It means a lot to me if you like the video and especially if you subscribe to my channel. I wish you all the very best.